We'll call the third regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? <coughs> Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Here. Manning? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Stephan? Excused. Van Akron? Here. Vanderwiel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Excused. Weininger? Here. 14 present. Quorum's present. Alder McGraw? Your Honor, I would move that we dispense with the reading of the Common Council meeting from April 21st and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Second. Moved and second that we approve the minutes of the previous Council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Reinflusch, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we have two hearings this evening. I'll read them both, and then if you would like to be heard, please step up to the microphone, give us your name, address. The first one is the rezoning property located at 706 North 9th Street. And the second one is rezoning property located at 406 Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Avenue. Any interested persons wishing to be heard? Any interested persons wishing to be heard? We are with Lutheran Social Services and we are requesting a zoning change for that property so that we can move our offices into that building. Lutheran Social Services has been located in Sheboygan for over 25 years. We provide quality counseling and case management services um, to improve the quality of people's lives, working to strengthen and support families and individuals and children and, and youth. Um, we serve all people regardless of national origin, religion, race, socioeconomic status, um, and um, I believe that we're um, a contributor to the improvement of this community. So we were asking for that zoning change. The entire um, east side of 9th Street is already commercial, and um, three of the six structures between uh, Wisconsin Avenue and... Uh, and Pennsylvania are already zoned commercial. We believe that the area is um, experiencing a, um, uh, a change and that it's becoming more, um, more commercial and it would be compatible with the, with the way that it is developing now. Thank you. Eleven Graf. Please, Mr. Mayor, was she speaking on uh, hearing number two, correct? Number one. No, she was speaking on one. North Main Street. Can, may I ask her a question? Sure. Okay. And there, there was a concern expressed to me. Uh, is there, there supposed to be a coffee house opening up in that building? Oh gosh, no, <laughs> no, no coffee houses. Oh my gosh, no, no and coffee that's what, houses. What's out there, and there, there was a concern about rezoning this for that purpose. No, it would. It's an office space. No coffee houses. No, no products being sold. No, um, no. Yeah. I'm glad you asked. Lutheran Social Services. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on, on either hearing? Alderman Van Ecker. Oh, hang on. He's going to speak one more and then you all. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. My name is Jonathan Rost. I live at uh, N7377 Highway CJ in Plymouth, and I'm here to speak. Uh, my wife and I are here to speak uh, representing a, a company that we, little company that we formed called North Star Properties, and we would like to request a zoning change 
from urban residential to central commercial uh, on the corner of Fourth and Pennsylvania. Um, for those who may or may not be familiar with it, it's going to be hard to see from where you are, but essentially it's the, uh, here's Fourth Street, Pennsylvania, the Harbor Lights uh, Tavern is at one end of this little triangular block, um, Pennsylvania Fourth and Franklin, and the um, Armory Bar is at the other end, so it's bookended right now by commercial properties. These are legal non-conforming properties. Um, the parcel in, um, in question here is, is, is actually made up of, six, of a 16,000 foot parcel that was made up of four pre-existing lots. There's only one small house that has about a 500 square foot footprint on it. And it's really right along the commercial corridor of Pennsylvania Avenue. And uh, <clears throat> it's also within what's called the Riverfront District on the city's master plan. So this Riverfront District uh, angles right up on Franklin Avenue and goes across, um, and this is the end of Pennsylvania. So the property in question is right, right within the heart of this uh, Riverfront District, and that zoning, or, or the Riverfront District in the master plan calls for offices, uh, residential and um, retail development within that structure. So it, it's, call, it's calling for mixed commercial and residential. And um, so therefore, our plans are to create some office, some professional office space, um, potentially mixed with um, maybe uh, residential as well. But the, um, right now the building would <clears throat> be far smaller than the 16,000 square feet of property involved, uh, probably have less than a 5,000 square foot footprint, possibly only about 2,500 to 3,000 square foot. So um, we would also um, have uh, a residential feel to the architecture of the building. We have not talked to an architect as yet, but the plans would be to make it a, um, a welcoming and, and um, uh, a structure that would be compatible with the, both the residential and the marina district and um, uh, provide, I think, a, a considerable improvement to the property value and to the neighborhood. Any questions that I might answer? Thank you for your consideration. Sorry. Um, that is, has not been determined. There's. Uh, fairly ample on-street parking in that area, and there's also the uh, parking lot in the, ar the current armory building. Well, I have to dispute with that because that road is too narrow to park on. I don't know how you could say that. Sir, park. sir, I hate to stop you, but you can't ask questions. Alderman can ask, but not the gallery. Okay? Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Van Akron. I'd ask that question where your parking is going to be down there. Okay. Um, there's ample, well, with 16,000 square feet on the property, there, yeah. you Could you please use the microphone? <laughs> Thank you. With 16,000 square feet on the property, and the plans would not call for a building that would be anywhere near that large. There's a strong likelihood that we will be able to provide some off-street parking. And quite frankly, I was going to approach the city to see if we could arrange some kind of a parking arrangement with the uh, armory parking lot, which is vacant about 99.9% .9 of the time. And this would be space that would only be required to, to uh, be used during typical office business hours, not, on, not evenings or weekends, when it would be likely that any armory parking would, would be needed. Thank you. Steve, did you want to address that, please? Mr. Mayor, Council, um, just a couple things. Uh, this holds true for both of the rezonings that we're dealing with tonight. They're both being rezoned from urban residential to central commercial. Um, right now, we're just dealing with uh, the land use designation, just from residential to commercial, not specifically the use at this point in time. Both issues 
would be required to do either a site plan or a conditional use permit that would re be required to go before the plan commission before any type of operation would occur. So some of the parking issues, things like that, would have to come and be submitted to show staff where exactly the parking's gonna be, um, what the use is gonna be, um, things like that. So these are all issues that will need to be addressed to the plan commission before any type of operation can take place at either of these sites. And so, so at such time as uh, um, say, for example, the uh, uh, an application is made, the parking and the issues like that, uh, members from uh, the public are free to feel, uh, come to the plan commission and make sure or ask questions and we can address those then. And the applicant probably hearing some of these is going to be aware of them as well. So, Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Anyone else wishing to be heard? Okay. Alderman Van Acker. I move to hear you be closed. Second. Move to the second act if your hearings be closed. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum, Pat? Yes. <clears throat> Robert Brown. One more time. Robert Brown. I guess he's not here. Renee Susha. Remember, Renee, it's five minutes. Renee Susha and I reside at 303 St. Clair Avenue and that is in Sheboygan. I would like to welcome the new alderman to the council and take this opportunity to explain to you some of the problems and opportunities that you currently face relating to room tax. The three problem areas lie with the way the city is currently spending the room tax money, the contract between the city and the chamber, and also the proposed contract between the city and Great Lakes. Tonight I'll focus primarily on the historical data for your benefit. In front of you, you all should have received a rainbow colored handout from me. I'm gonna do my best to get through it. My name and phone number are on the front page. Please feel free to call me because I know I'll probably run out of time. Um, if you look at the green sheet, that's a copy of the room tax statute. Basically room tax was developed to help cities promote and develop tourism. According to the statute, with an 8% room tax, the city can keep 20% and the remainder must be spent on promoting and developing tourism. However, if there is a city-owned convention center, some of the room tax money can be used to pay for the debt of the building. Now the city can either spend the money directly by having a department of tourism that would take out the ads in the magazines and go to the trade shows, or the money can be forwarded to a commission who can enter into a contract with a tourism entity, which is defined as a nonprofit organization such as the Chamber of Commerce or the CVB. Now, if a commission would be formed, it would consist of four to six members chosen by the mayor and approved by this council. This is not a, another layer of government. These are non-paid positions, but the catch is that at least one person has to be from the lodging industry. Now, when the city entered into a room tax contract with the chamber, you created a situation of taxation without representation. And that's the majority of the beef that we have from the lodging group with the city, is a taxation without the representation. Now, if you look at the gold sheets, that is a copy of the contract between the city and the chamber. And this is where some of the problems begin. First of all, the city entered the agreement without creating the commission. Secondly, the city is keeping the first $150,000 of room tax right off the top, whereas the statute gives you a percentage. You're entitled to 20%. Last year, by taking $150,000 off the top, you took 50%. That's a little bit more than you're entitled to by law. Um, you also have in there some interesting phrases. You plan to use room tax money for related public improvements other than the convention center. I question, can you use room tax money to pay for a $2.4 million promenade? I'm not sure. Um, you also have in there that room tax higher than 8% shall remain the city's and um, not part of this particular agreement. Now, if there is a convention center, you can raise the room tax above 8%, but nowhere does it say that you can keep it. Um, if you look at the blue sheet, that will give you some background in regards to where the 2002 expenses went for uh, tourism promotion by the city. A lot of it was spent on parades and also band concerts. And I want to bring your particular attention to the patrol division. Last year when I was part of the room tax committee, we spent a lot of time meeting with the city to talk about the patrol division and why that accounted for roughly 10% of the total room tax money brought in. And um, on the April 14th um, meeting, the city attorney said, quote, could a judge say the use of room tax to pay police overtime for the 4th of July parade is stretching the bounds? Could be. That's a possibility I could concede. 
We spent hours discussing this. So for your background information, I've also included on the white pages some information from the Special Operation Detective Agency. In the past, they manned the barricades on the 4th of July, whereas now apparently the city feels you must have an armed police officer manning those barricades. I just want to remind you, we don't live in Baghdad. You probably could get by a lot cheaper if you utilize the Special Operation Detective Agency a little bit more. Please look at their prices carefully um, when considering this issue. Lastly, the peach colored documents is a copy of the notice of claim. Believe it or not, this notice of claim does give you the opportunity to make the room tax issue a winning situation for everybody. First of all, if you form a commission, the lodging group would be happy because we'd have input into the way room tax money is dispersed. Secondly, we would make sure that the city took your fair share. I just got done giving you an example where you're taking 50% under the current situation. When Blue Harbor is up and running, there's going to be so much more money in the pool that the commission would force the city to take your 20%. Your 20% that you'd be forced to take is a lot more than the $150,000 you're currently swiping from the existing lodging group. So it's really a winning situation, and it's foolish that we have to serve you papers in the form of a lawsuit to force you to take the money you're entitled to. And also, we would make sure that the CVB got more money that they're entitled to. So they'd be in a winning situation as well. As you know, last year they had about 15,000 inquiries, and the first quarter of this year they had 15,000 inquiries. How can that be? The answer is they had more money first quarter this year due to a carryover left over from last year to actually promote the city. Denny Moyer went to four trade shows in the first quarter. That's why they had 15,000 inquiries in one quarter. Renee? Well, please call me. Thanks. Dulcie Johnson? Good evening, Mayor Schramm, council members. <clears throat> if you will give me $9.2 million, I will guarantee you a return on your investment of $1 a year for 99 years. Good deal if you can get it. And as I understand it, that is the deal that the city of Sheboygan has made with Great Lakes to build and operate a conference center as part of the Blue Harbor South Pier project. But there's more. According to a Saturday press story, part of the $9.2 million will also be used for a restaurant. Now, I keep hoping that that press reporter got that wrong, but I have this sinking feeling, knowing the way this project is going, that it's probably right. So is the city now going into the restaurant business, too? What's next? Where will it all end? Perhaps the city will also end up owning the hotel and the water park. What happened to private development along the way? None of the several aldermen I spoke with over the last few days had any idea what they were going to be asked to vote on tonight vis-a-vis -vis the Blue Harbor deal. Evidently, there's a lot of secrecy involved in the plans for this project, to say nothing of the haste to finalize an expenditure of a mere $21 million. Ironically, the day after this huge project was approved, the mayor announced the need for city layoffs and cuts in services. I think of this project as our second marina. You remember the marina, that project which no private developer would touch, but which the city plunged into, ignoring the wishes of the citizens for a referendum on the project, that project that someone we were told was going to pay the city a million dollars to operate for us, that project, that marina that was going to be so full of boats in two years that we would have to build 200 more slips in no time at all. Well. It's now several years later. The marina is not full, never has been. We're still paying Skipper Bud thousands of dollars to manage the facility, and the taxpayers are still subsidizing it to the tune last year of $85,000, I've been told. And now the city has been presented with another, yet another too good to be true project. And you know what they say, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. One would think that if Sheboygan was such a prime place for a conference center, that private developers would be all over town vying for the opportunity to build it and with their own money. I am told that when Great Lakes first made their proposal, there was no mention of a conference center. And suddenly, without explanation, the project just wasn't going to be feasible without a conference center, which Great Lakes, of course, will not finance. So what happened? 
The aldermen I've talked to don't know, so evidently it wasn't even discussed in a closed session. But obviously somebody got through to Great Lakes. I congratulate Alderman Wangaman on his courage in casting a common sense no vote on this proposal in face of great pressure, I am sure, from the mayor, the Chamber of Commerce, and the friends of Sheboygan. Some of you may know that I served eight years on the council, <coughs> and I cast a lot of no votes. But I was living in the real world, representing real people. People who worked hard to support their families, people without jobs, people on fixed incomes, people who can't afford a big boat, people who can't afford to subsidize a conference center and now possibly a restaurant for the city. There was a letter in the Sheboygan Press a few weeks ago by former Mayor Susha suggesting that we all look for the money tree that the city seems to have. Well, I was astounded to learn from Alderman Van Acker that my taxes are not going to go up as a result of the Blue Harbor South Pier project. So evidently the city does have a money tree, but I don't think so. Mayor Susha knows that he <coughs> and I and all of the tax-paying homeowner citizens of this city are the money tree. There seems to be no end to multi-million dollar pie-in-the-sky projects for this city. I am not against progress, but is this progress or folly? Risky? You bet. Responsible? No. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Alderman Croft. Croft. Thank Please. you, Your Honor. The consent agenda? Yes. I would move that, our, our, that all our O's be accepted and adopted, that all our C's be accepted and placed on no, the other way, but that's okay. Never mind. Our O's be accepted and placed on file. Okay. All our C's be accepted and adopted, and that the resolutions be put upon their passage. Who did the second? I'm sorry. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that all our O's be accepted and, and filed. All our C's be accepted and adopted, and resolutions be put upon their passage. And that's 3 1 through 3 22. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Berg? Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 323 through 328 to be referred. 329 we will hold for 349. 330 through 348 to be referred. 349 along with 329 by Alderman Ballman authorizing entry into a contract for building demolition. Alderman Ballman. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for the very first suspension of rules of this council year. Second. It's moved and seconded for suspension. Are there any objections? Hearing none, proceed. Um, I would then move that the report of officer be accepted and filed and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. This would be the resolution authorizing the uh, purchasing agent to enter into contract for building demolition. This would be the buildings, of course, along South Business Drive that have already been purchased. All the money already is in place, and the demolition is scheduled to begin on May 12th. This also was the reason that we did discuss this in a short committee meeting on the 1st of May, and the rest of the committee was in full agreement, but we couldn't report out because of the time that was available. So then again, um, I did make the motion to have it taken care of. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 350 by Alderman Don Van Akron, Wangerman, Winninger, and Perez authorizing the hiring of two new police officers immediately. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to add a. No, make your motion to pass. Make a motion, first. then we'll amend it. Make a motion that the resolution should be put upon its passage. Second. Move the second resolution be put upon its passage. Okay, Alderman. Okay, I'd like to make an amendment on this one. On the bottom, I'd rather put uh, be further resolved that. Two more officers will be hired in June 2003. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the amendment say that in June two, two more officers would be put upon appeal. Okay. Is there any objections? We don't need to rule on the amendment, right? No, just a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now, Alderman Ben Akron has amended. I move that uh, resolution as amended be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Doyle. Yes, sir, Your Honor. I, just a little bit of a digression, but this is a new council, so I'll take the liberty of just protesting as usual the way that we go about uh, cutting the budget. I agree that we need to cut spending, but I don't believe freezing department budgets and freezing hiring is the best way to do it. When I go to the internet and check out government websites, I find that city governments are laying off workers by the thousands. Newspapers report that businesses are also laying off employees, and some manufacturing companies are moving plants overseas to reduce costs. A major cause of the problem is skyrocketing health costs. Everyone, including employees and retirees, want the best health services, but they want employers or government to pay the cost. This unrestrained demand for free medical services and prescription drugs is driving health costs skyward. To pay our rising city employee health costs, we have frozen budgets, frozen hiring, raised taxes, and raised fees, but to no avail. New revenue is quickly gobbled up by the next round of higher health costs. We don't have enough money to pay for basics like rebuilding streets and solving flooding problems. To make matters worse, the state is threatening big cuts in shared revenue, and our departments have been forewarned to prepare for 7% cuts. And we've already heard how Mead Library may have to close several days a week. There may be fewer police patrols on the street, and there may be cutbacks in other key services. The reason for the freezes and the 7% cut is because we don't want to lay off employees. We have chosen to eliminate jobs through attrition. While this is a compassionate plan, it's wrong. We should base our budget decisions on what the citizens want, not what is best for city employees. The best way to save money is to cut health costs by cutting services at this point. In my three years on the Common Council, we have done very little to solve the budget problem. We have passed the responsibility on to the mayor and the department heads. We were elected to make hard decisions, and it's time we accepted that responsibility. I propose that the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee begin by bringing last year's survey of possible cuts back to the Common Council. The Committee of the Whole should schedule meetings to create a prioritized list of at least $2 million in possible cuts. That list should be published so the public can have input. With every cut, there will be unhappy people, but the money we save will allow us to adequately fund high priority services. If you read the paper, the school board has already made over a million dollars in cuts, and they have a plan to meet their budget crisis. We should do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, will you call a roll, please? Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 351 through 360 to be referred. 361, we'll go to plan <coughs> 1-1, one, one, 
RO by City Plan Commission recommending rezoning property located at 706 North 9th Street. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and file the RO and put the general ordinance upon its passage. Can the next one? Would you like to take a second one also? Yes, sir. It's moved and seconded that we accept and file the ROs and put the general ordinance upon their passage read, on 1112. Read what 12 is. 1-2, RO by City Planning Commission recommending rezoning property located at 406 Pennsylvania Avenue. Hearing no discussion, would you call the roll, please? Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Monty Mayor. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Winninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Doyle. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 362 will go to Industrial Development Commission. 363, that's the new development agreement. That will go to Committee of the Whole. Steve, did you want to address that? I just, just briefly received on your desks a, a black line version. Um, in the lower left-hand corner, it indicates it's got some letters and then some numbers, and there's a dot. And it says 12. Uh, that is version 12 of the document. The, uh, the document you passed on uh, April 14th was version 9. Uh, what this document is in front of you is shows the black line changes between version 9 and this version. So it incorporates uh, several drafts in between. But uh, because you acted on version 9, felt it was best to show you what's been changed from uh, what you acted on. Uh, much of this has to do with uh, issues that stem from uh, the resort proposed resort lender um, looking at the document after it was passed and, and requesting changes be addressed. Um, there's also a number of changes that relate to restructuring the 12.2 uh, the, uh, million. It, rather than a redevelopment authority loan for 12.2, you'll see that um, it's broken out into a loan of $4 million and a uh, and uh, 8.2 million going towards the uh, construction, equipping, and and uh, furnishing of the convention center uh, slant restaurant for the uh, for the project. Uh, I would ask that you all look at this between now and uh, the committee of the whole. I understand that's going to be next Monday, most likely. Um, I'll ask Alderman Warner if he can schedule that when he gets back for next Monday evening. Uh, if you got questions on the document uh, and they relate to the language or whatever, feel free to call me. If they're financial, I'm sure uh, Rich Gephardt would be happy to receive calls. Uh, uh, you know, any, any concerns or any questions? Uh, raise them or raise them at the Committee of the Whole. Uh, be time to, uh, I'll spend more time at the Committee of the Whole and go over more specifics of the changes and uh, for the newly elected aldermen, the, uh, some of the basics of uh, the agreement that are still in place as they, as they previously were. If anybody has questions now that wants to ask them, uh, feel free. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I, just, uh, I guess I just have a question. Is this uh, uh, revised uh, development agreement going to be made available to the public if they want to look at it, too, as we did the last time? We could. We I don't could. know that sure. we're going to have a lot of people uh, running over here to get a copy, but in case somebody is interested, I'd like the public to know we that one can be made available to Yes. It. Thank you. And just so you know, this is one reason we wanted to go to committee at whole next Monday night to give every alderman the opportunity to read it over and get their questions answered before you vote on it. So everyone's comfortable with it. So we are not voting on it this evening. In that regard, Mayor, uh, Your Honor, if I may, we have some new aldermen who had absolutely no input in, okay. in the original uh, document here. They're going to be asked to, to make a very, very important decision that involves a lot of uh, uh, 
money. Uh, I don't know if it would be appropriate to have perhaps Steve or, or Richard or Rich uh, meet with him for an hour or so and give him a, a briefing uh, as to the background and so forth. I don't even know if they would like that, but I would make that suggestion if, if that's uh, their, their wish. Thank you. If they like to, they're more than welcome to set up a meeting with us anytime. You can come on up and we'll do that. If you'd like to. Okay. Steve, other matters? 3 64 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Roy Ramos of Tejanos Mexican American Restaurant requesting a two hour parking limit in the 1200 block of North 13th Street from the corner of North 13th and Michigan to approximately the mid block alley entrance. That will go to public protection and safety. 365 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from William Kotler of Davil Engineering being a plat affidavit of correction of Still Meadows, Town of Sheboygan. Plan Commission. 366 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Eugene Whedon, submitting a list of issues which should be addressed by our public servants relative to the state pension fund when looking for ways to solve our budget problems. Strategic fiscal plan. <coughs> 367 is a resolution authorizing the extension of the city's underground locating services contract. And that will go to public works. Move to the second to adjourn under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed?